got it. Kate Bangs. Let's see here. Hi, everybody. Okay, I think I'm in. Let me make sure before you hang up. Hello. Mute. Hello, can anybody hear me? Escape. All right, yeah, I'm stuck with this clock thing again. Under view. Let's go side by side speaker. Nope. Yeah, now again, I forget how to get rid of this clock. Hi, can anyone hear me? Unmute yourself. Let me know that yes, you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Hi, everybody. Are we here? We're here for the Stark meeting, correct? I'm here. Uh, yeah, thanks. I see Paul Max. Is that my Aunt Debbie? <clears throat> no, this is your Uncle Paul. This is my Uncle Paul. This is the male part. Anyway, thanks, thanks, uh, honey. Looks like I'm in. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. All right. Hi, everybody. We're doing Hi, there's our guest speaker, Danielle. Look, good. Looks like everybody's filling in. Uh, I need to figure out how to get rid of, I've got this clock here. Show. Uh, la, 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 la. Let me see if I can remove him for you. Let me turn that up. Okay, I'm going to go over here. Ah, there we go. Loose guy, admit. Did I just admit him, Cindy, or <laughs> you still have control? Nope, the clock is back. <laughs> Great. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, we're coming up on meeting time. It'll just be a few minutes, so please make yourself at home while we get some of the technical issues worked out here. Uh, da, da, da. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to It should be all set. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, well, if this holds where I've got speaker view going on, I'm going to try to get um, my gallery view so I can see at least all the participants. There we go. My name has been changed. Gallery view. Thank you, Cindy. That's terrific. Hi, everybody. My name is Joe. De uh, my name is Joe Desenzo. I'm the chair of the uh, Summit to Hunger Arts Recreation and Culture Committee. And uh, our quorum is six. So right now I'm anticipating a few more of our members to show up so that we can actually begin the meeting. And uh, in the meantime, yes, just make yourselves at home and we'll get going shortly. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Gerardo. I'm looking it's forward to, to see seeing you. your mural. I beg your pardon? I'm looking forward to seeing your mural. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's coming together, Amor. Hey, Joe, this is your uncle. Did you get my email? Did I get your email? I got your email like a couple of weeks ago. Right. Requesting the pictures from the. Yeah. Did, oh, I guess you didn't get my response. Okay. <laughs> I did anyway, not. We'll have I to do it. On. We'll have to do it on private time there, Paul. Okay. I'm off. Thanks, but um, yeah, check your email. I did respond. Oh, okay. I'll go look in, in the spam. Uh, August. I shouldn't be in the spam. Anyway, uh, September 27. That's today. Yeah, I'm over here uh, compiling minutes for the meeting. Oh, Don, your hair looks wonderful. No, well, thank you. Did you restyle it recently? Yes. No. I'm messing with it. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank I got one, two. We had quite a few people say they're going to come to three, tonight and they aren't here yet. So we'll okay. See well, later. let's see. It's it's very close, very close to the meeting time. We'll have to hang on a few more minutes. We need three more people to uh, compile a quorum. Yeah, so we have nine people here. Is that right? Uh huh. Let's see. Which Debbie? Which Debbie just joined the meeting? Debbie Beck, is that you? Unmute yourself. <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong meeting. I thought this was a painting class. The what? <laughs> well, it's going to be a presentation by a local treasurer, Daniel Eubank, showing her oil painting. Oh, so maybe I am in 
Is it Stark or? This yeah. is Stark Committee. Yeah. Um, there we go. So who is Cindy? Are you admitting these people? Oh, Marsh is here. Yay, Marsh. Welcome. Yay. You can unmute yourself if you can. I know I couldn't unmute myself initially, Joe. It said. Yeah. It said not a lot. They're not allowing you to unmute. Huh. I got a message saying. The host is not allowing you to unmute. Uh, let's yeah, me see. too. I think you should only be so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to mute because my dog is whining. So now, which Debbie is this? I'm Joe's aunt. Say it again. Oh, can you hear me? I can't. I'm not good at this. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Is that, De is that Debbie Max? This is Debbie Max, Joe's aunt. Oh, okay. okay. Very good. It's okay. a family. Okay. It's a family okay. reunion for me. So thanks, everyone. And and Romeo the poodle's here, but for some reason, I think he wants a treat because I'm sitting at the computer because he's whining. <laughs> All right, for hey, Elvin. Joanna. Joanna's here. Joanna Gates. Yeah. So we got one, two, three. Is that four of us? Hey, yeah, Kate. Four. <laughs> Jennifer Zapp. Okay, we'll get going in just a second. I'm sure the members. Thank you for being here, Jennifer. Jennifer teaches painting at McGordy now. Yeah, right. Yes, and Joanna. Starting tomorrow. Huh? Starting tomorrow is my first day Yay. of acrylics class. And the watercolor class started today with uh, Chris Gordy teaching it. So, yeah. Cool. You're moody. All right, I'm going to start calling. Uh, oh, there's Lucy. Okay, Lucy, you avoided the phone call. Great to see you. <laughs> and you see Marsha's sculptures behind her there on the wall. One, two, Four, five. Okay, I'm waiting for one more Stark member. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. There's one, two. Let's see. Karen. Three, four. There's five of us right now. Let's see. We're six, huh? Yep. Well, let's hold the vision because I, I had lots of people saying they're coming. And I did send a personal message to K Katie. Yeah. Did she respond? Yeah. Oh, good. So I was thinking that everybody should be here, but maybe people are late. What is Johanna Gates? Joanna Gates is here. Yeah. Right behind the Golden Gates. Oh, yes. Oh. Change of scenery. Uh, Karen, <laughs> Karen's avoiding me. Let's go to Michelle. Ooh, ooh. Uh, 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 I like your hair, Danielle. Thank you. I like yours. Thank you. You got this cute little streak. I want to give a shout out to Daryl and Nancy. I will be right back. Hi. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. So, Michelle's. Hi, everybody. Uh, for those of you uh, who maybe are here for the first time, this is uh, an arts and recreation, an arts, culture, and recreation meeting under the city of Los Angeles. And we have some uh, protocols that we have to follow through with. Right now we are trying to reach a quorum. And as soon as we have uh, one more of our regular attending members, we can begin the meeting. And I'm very excited. Okay, let's see, there's Corey. La da da. So, Danielle, I'm sure you have more to share. I thought I saw a post recently. You have a show going right now in San Luis Obispo. Is that right? Um, I have uh, uh, some pieces in a show in um, West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll, I'll have a homecoming in San Luis Obispo in November for two paintings that were stolen Ooh. and then recovered. I haven't even seen oh, them yet. So. Joe DeCenzo, I wanted to check you. <laughs> we can um, mute him. I have a show in New York in December. To assign ah, it. cool. Show in New York as well. Bye-bye. Go girl. 
Can I ask a question? Are you guys recording this for public viewing? Uh, yes, we're recording right now. Awesome. So is there a demonstration? A demonstration. Okay, I just got a message from Karen. She's not available tonight. Uh, let me try KT. Uh, who's who are you representing from Arts for LA? No, I tried to change my name. I'm here personally. Uh huh. Um, oh, okay. And I paint, and that's why I was interested. But I have been really super busy all Ava. day. Ava. And it might be better if I watch a recording. Oh, um, oh, oh, I understand. And that's a good question. I've been asked before, especially by media, like where these recordings here. get Michelle posted Butler. to. And um, I can't exactly tell you where, I'm sure they get posted to the Sun of Tahunga, uh Neighborhood Council website. I just couldn't tell you exactly where. But uh, yeah, if you need to leave, we totally understand. All right, hello everybody. With the arrival of Michelle Wadler, we are a quorum. Hi, everybody. Thank you. This is the Wednesday edition of the Sun Tahunga Arts, Recreation and Culture uh, Committee meeting. We meet on the fourth Tuesday of the month regularly. Uh, we're very excited. We have a special guest speaker, uh, Danielle Eubank, and we'll be introducing her shortly. But because this is a city sanctioned meeting, we have a few uh, things that we have to follow through with, with regard to our protocol. And I just wanted to say for those of you who haven't attended here before, uh, some information can be um, learned about us by logging on to the Sun Tahunga Neighborhood Council website. That's stnc.org. Our mission statement as a arts and culture committee is to essentially be a, a connecting point or a, uh, an area where artists and organizations can come together and network and help push their uh, projects forward. They can also find uh, different sources for funding. And we also encourage everybody uh, to attend the events that take place regularly, now much more regularly, thanks to the pandemic slowing down in the area. And uh, it's pretty wonderful. We have uh, an, uh, the McGroarty Arts Center is here in the area, and our meeting helps to inform everybody what's going on there. We have the Bolton Hall Museum, and as well, we have re regular reports on activities at the museum here at our meeting. So rather than uh, taking up too much time and introducing the regular members of our committee, I'm just going to move forward. One of the things we have to do uh, with regard to the city requirements is to discuss the code of conduct. We are a city meeting. This is being recorded. Uh, our guests, which uh, most of you tonight are our guests, you're very welcome to participate in any discussions. I ask that you uh, observe a code of conduct in um, keeping your comments focused on the item on the agenda. We don't make any personal attacks. We certainly uh, take uh, and like to exhibit courtesy to uh, any groups, especially protected groups that are here. So there will be no personal attacks uh, with regards to what's happening or else as the chairman of the committee, I am authorized to at least cut you off or shut your microphones off. Uh, we have 10 regular members in our meeting and as such, our quorum is six. And um, that's pretty good. That satisfies our mission statement, code of conduct, and quorum requirements. Uh, one last little bit of housekeeping we have to do is go over the meetings from the last minutes. I'm going to try to do that so that we can get uh, to our guest speaker very quickly. So I'm going to look here and share the screen and bring up. Let's see if these look like minutes. Yeah, there we go. Okay. These are the minutes from our meeting last month of August uh, 23rd. In attendance on that meeting was myself, Joanna Gates, Gerardo Barrientos, Karen Von Gunten, KT Travers, Michelle Wadler, Don Jenkins, Debbie Beck, Lucy Berman. Those were the regular start committee members. And we had one guest, Cindy Cleghorn. 
as I called the meeting to order. The committee chair, Joe DiCenzo, convened the meeting at 7.35 p.m. As no new guests were present, introductions were waived. Joe read the minutes of July 29th, 2022. Gerardo Barrientos moved to approve the minutes. Joanna Gates seconded the motion. The motion passed five to zero with one abstention. Item number two was review of the mission statement, the code of conduct, and the quorum requirements. Joe read through the Stark mission statement as it appears on the STNC website, reminding members that a discussion regarding revisions or supplements is always welcome. Following the summary of the code of conduct, member Gerardo Barrientos informed the committee that his signed acceptance of the code was submitted through the beautification committee of which he is a member. Item number three, under public comments and updates for non-agenda items, KT Travers announced the second annual Indigenous Peoples Day <laughs> for October 9th, 2022, from 12 noon till 3 p.m. ST Forward, ABRA, and ST Voices United are organizing. Joe mentioned the sources of the fundraising event we love, the success rather, of the fundraising event we love to laugh at Bolton Hall Museum on August 13th. It was hosted by Franny McCartney and featured the Randy Van Horn Siggers. It was well attended and fun for all. Joanna invited all to her mindful health and healing fair at her studio on September 11th. Item number four, the guest speaker presentation, artist teacher, Joanna Gates, narrated a beautiful and alluring slideshow depicting her painting, photography, jewelry, and sculpture through different phases of her career. Her recurring images are reflections of herself. She is personified through the various media medium she works. She read poetry that was composed to accompany some of her works. She spoke of her process how she is motivated by both calm and chaos. Images of injury and transformation are recurring themes in her work. She is fueled by the power of images and knows how they can move and motivate people. Item number five was a review of the National Night Out. Joe DiCenzo, Gerardo Barrientos, and Rudy Melendez set up booths and engaged the attendees while promoting Stark the Beautification Penny and Pinewood Elementary Mural. We had a chance to speak with the Senior Lead Officer of Sunland Antahunga. The cover band Good Times entertained throughout the evening. Item number six was a discussion guest speaker for September. The committee discussed the possibility of presenting Gerardo Barrientos as the featured speaker for the month of September. He will confirm his schedule and notify the committee chair if this is possible. Number seven, committee project updates, Gerardo Barrientos regarding the Pinewood mural, Michelle Wadler regarding the Phoenix Rising and the Bus Bench Ads Committee. That was, let's see. I will have to fill that in. Let's see, I think. Anybody remember, was that tabled or Gerardo, you simply said that we were still looking for the same repairs to the wall that you had mentioned the month before. Correct. Okay. Gerardo mentioned. They just prime it again, everything. Necessary repairs are still pending. I think I think following the meeting, uh, Michelle sent me some information regarding a bid, but that was after the meeting. Okay, item number eight, update to the McGordy Art Center. Joanne Joanna Gates stated that in-person classes will resume September 26th through November 19th. The Burgers Beer and Band event is being organized, and a date will be announced soon. She also announced the restoration and resurfacing of the McGordy the Mac parking lot has been completed. And then number nine, discussion for upcoming future events was tabled. Joe completed the meeting with a reading of his poem from the cradle of Los Terranitos that he composed for the Bolton Hall Museum fundraiser. And we adjourned at 9.20 p.m. Uh, thank you. I don't want to rush too quickly through this. Uh, do any of the committee members who were attending last month's meeting, do they have any uh, corrections or revisions they'd like to notate at this time? The uh, the wall, uh, the mural. Yeah. They didn't repair it. They just prime it everything again. Okay. It's repaired. Uh, and that's the school, right? Correct. Uh, 
Uh, let's this up. Gosh, what am I missing here? Something's wrong with my. That's the finger I I injured. Prime the wool. Primer painted the offending area again. It was just that area. They yeah. correct. Correct. Again. Okay. And I warned him. I warned him that if it's raining again and it bubbles, and they're gonna have to pay for it. Okay. Okay. That's good. All righty. Thank you. All right, then, if there are no other corrections or revisions, I'll take that off at the time. Thank you. For I the move that we... I'm sorry, was that Dawn? Yes. That we accept the minutes. Okay, do I have a second? I second it, Michelle. Michelle. Let me notate this. Minutes and Michelle seconded. All righty. Thank you. Uh, for the start committee members, all those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. I can't hear you. Lucy, do you abstain? All right. So I got five approved, zero against, one abstained. Thanks very much. Give me, give me two seconds here. I'm really, really hoping that one of our other members uh, does is able to make it as she has an agenda item coming up. Joe, I was trying to vote, but I couldn't figure out where to turn on the buttons. Oh, okay. Did you want to uh, I approve? I say approve, but approve. I but right. didn't find my buttons. Okay. Um, motion passes six to zero then. There we go. All right. Now, next up on our agenda uh, is public comments. Now, public comments um, are not meant to be a discussion. Everybody, including our guests, they're welcome to make any comments that might be relevant with regards to arts and culture in our area. If you have an event coming up that you would like to share, now would be a good time for you to mention that. Do I have any public comments? The only thing I had to say, Joe, is that we do have a date for the Burger Band in Beer uh, Night at Wisconsin, or at uh, McGrady Arts Center, and that is October 15th. Oh, this is Jennifer speaking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All so, right. I was going to do that in my McGrady, but thanks, okay. Jennifer, yeah, for yeah, bringing it already, up now. Uh, Joanna okay. has already notified yeah, we can, last month. I think it bears oh, thank you. <laughs> it does. I'm glad you did again. We can't hear it too often. Um, God, did you say October 15th? Yeah. That's right. What do you have? A conflict? We'll change it just so you can. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question. I've got to check my calendar. I think I got something. It's, six. it's like 6 to 8, 8 30, 9, depending on how long we all hang out. There's beer and band. I'll, I'll make sure I make it. And if I, I heard, well, Joanna, you're going to announce this during your opening anyway, so we don't have yeah. to say any more about that. Yeah. So okay. Long, we'll re, we'll out. revisit it again. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Are there any other um, comments with regards to, uh, for public comments at this time? I don't see any hands poking up. So then, okay, I will close agenda item number three. Now let's go to uh, 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 turn this thing over. All right, agenda item number four. Before I get started here, I want to give Danielle Eubank. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can if I make you a co-host, Danielle. Hopefully that will give you the opportunity to share your screen when it comes time ladies and gentlemen i'm able to i just tested it yeah oh great uh i see a hand cindy cleghorn um 
I just wanted to let you know you had somebody raising their hand for public comment, but it, it bounced him out. So I, I don't know what happened. I think he's going to try again. So I just wanted to let you know. It bounced them out. Are they no longer in the meeting? Do they need to log in again? Yeah, they do. You'll see it. It's a phone number ending in the. Oh, uh, three, I, I, I saw a phone. Three. Oh, okay. I saw a phone number. All right. If they come back uh, before too long. We'll have to give them, once I start the, uh, the next presentation, though, um, if he returns, we'll, we'll allow him to speak following the presentation. Hey, thanks. I'll let uh, him know. Okay. Thanks all very much. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, our special guest speaker for the month of September. Uh, she's local to our area, and uh, she is very well known in the area, and I want to say that her presentation tonight, she will be showing images of her artwork. And I can personally say I've seen these oil paintings in person. And as, as spectacular as they do look in photographs, they pale in comparison to the impact that they have uh, in person. So if you ever get an opportunity to see the artwork of Danielle Eubank, uh, please, uh, you'd be doing yourselves a favor to uh, put that in your schedule. Uh, she has shows regularly uh, in various locations. I hope she mentions that I saw a post yesterday and a couple of her artworks that had been stolen were returned, at least to the gallery where they are on display. It is indeed my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to present the artist, Danielle Eubank. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a real honor to be here. and. Um, I want to let you, Joe, and the other committee members know that um, I actually quite often read the minutes of what's gone on, even though I don't make it to the meetings. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm there with you in spirit. Um, yes, so I, I believe I have 15 minutes. Um, so I have created a very compact um, presentation for you all. I quite often speak for an hour plus questions, but I think I uh, could get this down to about 15 minutes. Um, and then um, if I've gone over something too quickly or if I've missed something out, please ask at the end. Um, does that sound about right? Perfect. Don't waste any time uh, going through the minutia, please. I won't, I won't, here we go. So, um, we should be sharing. Am I sharing? I see it. Okay. So um, I am an expedition artist. Uh, um, I have sailed and painted every ocean on the planet. Um, and my project, One Artist, Five Oceans, is one that I have recently um, sort of completed, if you will. Uh, it was a decades long project in which I um, <clears throat> set out to sail every ocean. <clears throat> excuse me, almost all on, <clears throat> on um, recreations of ancient vessels, wind-powered vessels mostly, um, to help raise awareness about the state of the oceans and climate change. Um, I like to think of it as a gift, right? This is our earth that we see is a gift. A lot of people ask me, well, what the heck is an expedition artist, which is an excellent question. Um, you can see the guy with the chainsaw behind me as I'm sketching in Syria. Uh, I like to say an expedition artist is somebody that has excellent concentration powers. <laughs> um, he was helping make one of the vessels uh, that I was part of, the Phoenicia vessel. But actually, um, the first one I'm going to talk about is the Borbadur ship. So what is an expedition artist? Ever since there have been expeditions, there have been artists. Originally, these people were set out to document what was there, either people that were going to be, that were encountered, um, or different plants and you know, drawings of the potato and things like this that had never been seen. And then when photography came along, you can imagine um, Ernest Shackleton had Frank Hurley. And if it wasn't for Frank Hurley and his heroic endeavors to actually swim under the ice to uh, get the film out from Antarctica, from the Southern Ocean, then we wouldn't have any record of the Shackleton expedition. Okay, so the, I'm gonna go through uh, four um, expeditions. 
and talk to you a little bit about that. And then I'm gonna show you some of my artwork and what I've been working on. So in, in my chronology, not in the Earth's chronology, but in my chronology, the first expedition um, is the Bora Budur ship expedition. So the Bora Budur is a stupa temple. That's the temples with the heads, right? You think of Cambodia. This is um, in central Indonesia, in central Java. It's an eighth century uh, temple. And on this temple, there are these stone relief carvings. So it starts out with art, right? It starts with stone relief carvings showing this wackadoodle vessel. So here's this wackadoodle boat. It's got two masts that are, you know, these biped masts and outriggers on both sides. And a guy named Philip Beale set out to carve it or to create it, recreate it, because he saw these carvings when he was in the Royal Navy. So where did we go? Well, there is a lot of thought that the people from Indonesia sailed across the Indian Ocean um, around the Cape of Good Hope all the way up to the west coast of Africa. So we set out to see if a boat like this could make that voyage, and it did. And I was the expedition artist aboard that vessel. I could talk to you for hours about that one expedition, but we're going to move on to the next expedition. <laughs> so the Phoenician expedition, that's the one that you saw in that photo um, a little bit ago with the guy um, with the chainsaw in the back. We built that boat in Syria, and this is a recreation of a Phoenician boat. So 2,000 years older, um, actually, than the, um, than the Borbadur ship expedition, uh, 600 BCE. Herodotus in 500 BCE said that the Phoenicians were the basically circumnavigated Africa. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was told that it was Bartholomew Diaz or um, Vasco da Gama or one of these guys, right? But Herodotus said, you know, it was actually 2000 years prior to those guys. And this is ironically to me, this boat, even though it's 2000 years older or 1200 years older, rather, it looks much more like the kind of boat you might draw when you were a kid, right? And where did we go? Well, we started out in Syria, as you know, Syria is on the Mediterranean. So, and then we sailed um, through the Suez Canal, through the Red Sea, circumnavigated Africa in a clockwise motion, back in through the Pillars of Hercules, through the Mediterranean, and then ended up in Syria. Then um, I was actually part of that, um, with that boat, uh, when we sailed it to London for the Queen's Jubilee back in 2012. When I go on these expeditions, um, uh, this is a sample of what I take with me. So this is in Syria. Um, I am in a boatyard. I'm sitting among, a bun amongst a bunch of junk, right? Um, 2,000 years worth of junk. Next to me, you'll see in a second, there is a Phoenician wall. So the Phoenicians were around, uh, you know, about two, three to 75 or so years, 100 years before the Common Era. Um, so I'm, there's a chain here. Um, you can see I always take a small sketchbook and a large sketchbook. I also take a, a really tiny little sketchbook with me. Um, I take a Tupperware. I still use the same Tupperware, even though it's plastic. It, I still use the same one. I use it as a palette as well. Um, some very kind people brought me a little table, which was nice. Usually I'm just sitting on the ground and you'll notice that they also brought me some very excellent Syrian coffee. <laughs> so I'm painting the boat um, at this point. You can see what I'm painting in my sketchbook in oils. This is an example of one of my paintings. This is a painting of the Borobudur ship. And people ask me all the time, well, you know, what does that, what does that have to do with where you were? Well, this is where I was sitting. This is what I was looking at. So you can see the sail reflected in the water. You can see the junk in the water. But what I do is I make it, I kind of deal with the junk, right? I kind of deal with it emotionally by creating my own sort of image from what was reality. Incidentally, 
behind me, and this is often the case, but behind me, this is what it looked like. And this is the regular shipyard. So my work deals with, um, as I mentioned, talking about some of the things that are going on in the world in terms of the environment. And this, uh, so I find it kind of helpful to see, well, this is where I was actually sitting when I was doing the sketches for that. Now let's talk a little bit about the paintings. Um, those were the two oldest expeditions. Um, I also uh, sailed to the high Arctic um, and uh, painted the Arctic there and then to Antarctica where I painted the Southern Ocean. And fortunately I live on the Pacific Ocean. So uh, I've been out on various sailboats there. I can't say that I own one, but I can say that some very nice friends have let me come out and sketch aboard their boats, which is nice. So this is um, me and two of my paintings of the Arctic. These are 116 inches wide um, by 72 um, high. So they're sort of six feet by almost 10 feet. This is the Pacific Ocean. That's actually um, Long Beach. There's the Pacific Ocean as well, but this is from Taiwan. So looking at the Pacific Ocean in a completely different way where the sun rises over the Pacific and sets over land. This is the Atlantic. It's actually the Isle of Mole, Scotland. I like to take regular, ordinary things that you see every day and make them different, right? I try to get people to stop and notice and think about things because if they stop and notice and think about water, then they might feel more passionate about it and they might do something about it eventually. This is the Atlantic. As you can tell, this is the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> um, when I was there, they were, uh, I think they were repointing it or something, I'm not sure. There was scaffoldings and, and fabric, protective fabric up all over it. So that's what you're seeing. This is the Indian Ocean. This is Beira, Mozambique, Indian Ocean. I like to incorporate um, some of the things that I see on land if I am on land. And when I was in Mozambique, I spent a lot of time in the fabric stores, looking at the types of fabric that um, mostly women were buying at the time um, for, their, uh, for their clothing. The Indian Ocean, this is from northern, this is from northern Indonesia, northern Bali. Um, and in this part of the world, the sand is black because of the makeup of the, the minerals there. So the water reflects a very different color. This is the Indian Ocean, Mozambique. So this is a painting, my interpretation of a painting. I actually painted this from the back of the Phoenicia boat. Um, this is a police boat, which is up on blocks. And then we get to the Arctic. So the Arctic, um, when I got to the Arctic, um, I thought, oh yeah, I think I know what I'm in for, right? I've already painted three of the world's oceans. Um, yeah, I got this. And then I, I got to the Arctic and I had my mind completely blown because I was used to taking ordinary things, like I just said, and, and kind of trying to make them more interesting, right? Trying to abstract them, trying to get them relatable to people. But then when I got to the Arctic, it was already abstract. Nothing behaved properly. The sun, you know, disappeared, disappears for months on end. The moon stays out for months on end. The earth is is frozen and liquid because it's frozen. The, the water is frozen. It's a completely different color. So my work changed quite a lot at this point. Um, and it started to get more abstract. Um, I like these types of motifs. Um, almost some people tell me that they look almost like uh, work from the Pacific Northwest, indigenous peoples. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But um, this is what I felt when I was with the water. So it's a portrait of the water, but it's also how I feel. Here's the Arctic again, taking water and turning it around, really trying to get the audience to really look at the water and think about it. You know, if something looks the way you, your brain thinks it should look, 
then you tend not to notice it, right? Like, oh, that's a toaster. I've seen that a million times. So if you turn it around a little bit, if you bend it, if you change the color, then sometimes you can get people to look at things differently. The Arctic again. Um, this is a reflection of Santa's coat in the high Arctic. Uh, no, it's not. This is actually from New Ilsand. And this is the northernmost community on the planet. It's a scientific research center. It's where they research a lot of things like the ozone layer and how much lead is in the atmosphere, things like this. And it's an international zone, which means it's not a country. So um, any country that can afford to send researchers up there does. There's all kinds of weather balloons and things like that go on up there. Then we get to the Southern Ocean. So the Southern Ocean is what we usually call the ocean that surrounds Antarctica. It used to be called the Southern Pacific, but nowadays most everyone calls it the Southern Ocean. This is a reflection of a seal on an ice floe. This is the Southern Ocean. Um, thanks, Joe, for the introduction. This is one of the paintings that was stolen a year and a half ago from um, I, my gallerist in San Luis Obispo. It's a long story, but the paintings showed up again. I, After a year and a half, somebody called up the gallery and said, I have the paintings. So <laughs> I'm very pleased and I haven't seen them yet. So we'll, we'll see how that gets on. But anyway, this is um, what the water looks like when you have icebergs, the big shelf kind of icebergs that you only get in the Southern Ocean. This is also the Southern Ocean, my interpretation as is this, it is this, the Southern Ocean. So the, I think the work is getting a little bit more um, abstracted and um, emotional. I like to say it's more deliberate. I think my work is getting more deliberate. This is the Southern Ocean. And last but not least, thank you all. Ah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me? Do we have time? All right. Hi, Danielle. Can you hear me? It's Joe. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say who took that last photograph. I did. Oh, you? That's one of your photos. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it's. Uh, I want to say it's 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 chilling because it looks. Was it as cold as it looks? Yes. One thing, but yeah. yet it just looks like it looks like you could be enveloped in that sort of environment that you just like fold it into whatever is freezing over that's um you you showed pictures of things that uh i, I want to say these are dreams that you know maybe one day they will come true for me i'm so grateful that you were here to share i feel a little bit closer to these areas thanks to what you showed and i'd like to open up questions um for anybody here if we could kind of take it one at a time I'm sure you're probably interested in, in knowing uh, what else she does, how she, uh, the process that she works, uh, if she works another medium, that sort of thing. Do I have any questions? Gallery. I want to say. Um, Gerardo has his hand up. Uh, oh, okay, because we got a big group. The hands are kind of small. Go ahead, Gerardo. Uh, First of all, I want to say you are a very brave woman. You are a very amazing woman. And not only as an artist, but as a person, since I got to know you, uh, impress me the quality of artwork that you do. You venture into your mind. You uh, alter, if you want to put it that way, what you see in a very adventurous way. and. Uh, I you have a question. And one of the Indian Ocean's pictures you show, you show the bottom of the boat. And that was the only part I saw realistically. But uh, after all of these, they are, I can see in every ocean, different colors. And uh, what, what is next for you? That will be my question. What is next for you after all of these? It is very, I mean, to top it up, what is next for you? 
Thank you for, thank you, Gerardo, and thank you for your very kind words. I could say a lot of the same things about you and your artwork and you as a person. So thank you very much. Um, uh, what is next for me? Well, I have a couple of projects that I am getting going on. I am finally writing a book about um, One Artist, Five Oceans. When I say writing a book, um, I'm really not a writer. So it's just a bunch of pictures. <laughs> but but uh, but I know other people that are writers and um, and I, and I think I'll write a little something. I am I have written a little something about each of the oceans. Um, so that's one thing that's going on. Another thing is um, I'm focusing more on shipping in California. You know, we are we have the biggest ports um, in the United States, I think, with with a couple of exceptions. From around the think, world too. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, I've seen a lot of shipping containers. <laughs> you know, these these craft that I've been on don't go to the places that yachts go to. They go to the places that the crusty old shipping containers go to. So um, yeah, so, so I, th I find that very interesting. Um, it says a lot about our culture and it says a lot about how we use the land and how we use cities and how cities have changed. If you think of how San Francisco used to be a port and then um, you know, with containerization, it, it became Oakland and anyway, that's a, that's a whole subject. That's one, and then uh, another one is, um, and I'm not, I don't think my husband's super excited about this, but I want to go to the five most polluted bits of water in the United States, because I think that needs to be more, um, I think more people need to know about that. You know, a lot of people, when they think of dirty water, they think of um, other countries, but actually some of the most polluted places are right in our in our own backyard. So um, yeah, that's what's coming up next in terms of projects. And then, yeah, I have various shows and things. Well, uh, mm -hmm. since you said that you are not a writer, just keep it in mind, a picture say more than a thousand words. <laughs> oh, that's a relief. <laughs> Thank you, you, you have a tons of pictures. <laughs> yeah, does anyone else uh, have any questions for the speaker? Uh, Paul Max has a hand up. Oh, let's see. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Danielle, you, your work is incredible. Um, but, and I'm just going to take a guess before I ask the question. Are you, are you self-taught? Uh, or did you, well, did you go to one of the great art schools? I, I, I went to a very fine school. Uh, I went to UCLA. Oh. Um, I studied, um, I have two degrees from there. I have a, a bachelor's degree and an MFA from there, Master of Fine Arts. Um, and I, I actually studied um, multimedia. So I was the first person to uh, graduate, graduate with an MFA uh, studying multimedia from UCLA, which is now, you know, there's like the internet and stuff, like there's the World Wide Web. And, but I was the first person to do that there. Um, and it's now a huge department. So at the time that was um, sort of my art form. It was super avant-garde um, to me, uh, not nobody <laughs> was doing it. Um, you, you just had to like learn how to write um, HTML. Um, and before that, HyperCard. <laughs> For those of you that remember that and before that, CD-ROMs. <laughs> Yeah, I know Jennifer knows. Jennifer knows. We've had this conversation before. <laughs> so anyway, uh, not so it was it was uh, in the art and architecture department, um, oh. not painting. Yeah, that's a fine school. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm I'm ancient. I go all the way back to Chouinard Art Institute. Oh wow! And oh, wow. which I don't even know if they're still around, but perhaps. That's very cool. Anyhow, great, great work. Enjoyed uh, your presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Um, I have a question with regard to, uh, I want to say at least the uh, images that you showed us tonight were, I want to say, you know, artists interpret, they see the beauty in something. While I saw the photograph of a couple of 
uh, instances where there were quite a lot of plastic bottles and just detritus from who knows where, you know, possibly these nations, they may have different regulations about, you know, just maybe they just take a barge, you know, 100 yards off the coast and, and dump the trash, I don't know. But at least the people you were uh, working with, did you feel that the, they respected um, the ocean and were, were, were at least uh, trying to maintain a clean productivity? I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, for one thing, it was almost exclusively um, wind driven. So there was very little pollution that way. There are a couple of times when we had to use a, a motor uh, getting in and out of these kind of congested ports and things. Um, you don't, pe people with their fancy yachts don't like it when you bash into it with your old wooden boat <laughs> or any other boat, I guess. Um, I wouldn't know. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Um, there are strict regulations when you are in open waters, you cannot put anything off the boat, which is not biodegradable and, and you can't, you know, spill any fuel and you can't dump garbage and anything like, and things like that. But the kind of trash that I showed, I have seen that in every nation. I have seen that in this country. I have seen that in the United Kingdom. I've seen it in Taiwan. I've seen it in Syria. I've seen it in France. I've seen it in Italy. I've seen it every single place that I've been. So it's not like just a developing world type scenario. It happens everywhere. Here it's it's almost worse because we eat snacks out of plastic little plastic chips bags and things and they and or or I don't I, have you guys ever noticed this why when you go hiking do you see little plastic things with floss who is it that flosses while they're hiking like, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about <laughs> or or like plastic the the little lids to plastic bottles you know everything that we eat is out of plastic and if people just took a moment and and bought you know the the glass bottle rather than the plastic bottle, there'd be a lot less of this kind of detritus in the ocean. Because the problem is, is that it blows, right? It's not like people just, you know, dump it in the ocean. That's what people sometimes think when I talk to them about it. But what happens is it blows. If you, if it blows off the back of your truck, or if you drop it, it goes into a storm drain, and then it goes into a river, and then it goes into the ocean. So it, it, it finds its way there. And then when it when plastic is met with salt water, it actually doesn't decompose. The salt water preserves it. Um, mm. So it breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces until until it's eaten by marine animals. And um, you know, I don't I don't want to I don't want to be a big downer, but even you know, humans have plastic in our lungs now. So <laughs> it's yeah. it's something that we need to deal with. <laughs> well, I think that's a really good message because uh, you can't tell anybody anything until you can get their attention. And the beauty of your art is certainly alluring to the point where you can draw some people in and at least say, you know, although this is what I painted, this is what I, this is the reality. These are the, some of the things that I was seeing. Um, I really, I don't have the ability to write messages here. I'd like to uh, give all you guys uh, at least uh, Danielle's uh, email site. Is it is it Danielle Danielle Eubank Art dot com? Yeah. yeah, it's or yeah Danielle oh, Eubank Art dot com or just Danielle Eubank dot com. Both will work. And I want to say something to all of you, which is that I would very much like to um, you know speak with you one on one. And if anyone wants to come to my studio. Um, I'm only in Sunland, so I'm I'm not far away. Um, <laughs> so I would I would love to host you and and um, talk to you as artist to artist. Okay, thank you, thank you. Before I move on, please let me know if there's uh, any other conversation from uh, the gallery. No, I see. Uh, so okay, somebody was waving waving goodbye. Then uh, wonderful, you exceeded our expectations. Uh, Danielle, thank you. This was one of the larger 
uh, attended meetings that we've had. I think that's a, a testament to um, how well how well you're known here, and so I'm grateful for that. Danielle used to be uh, a member of Start Committee. Now Start Committee goes back now ten years, and people come in and volunteer their time for whatever period they have. So. Um, as she, as she mentioned earlier, I'm grateful you sort of monitor our, min, our <laughs> minutes and let us know what else is going on. Um, I see one hand uh, raised uh, there, Mark Dutton. Is this a, a comment? It's not a comment. I was trying to get in earlier on public comment, and Zoom was not having it. Oh, I understand. Okay, let me say goodbye to Danielle, and I promised uh, that uh, I would allow you to, to you. make your comment at that time there. Thank you. So uh, thanks very much. Uh, guests, um, you're welcome to please uh, stick around for a little while and see what we do here at Arts, Recreation, and Culture Committee. Uh, coming up on our agenda, and we, we're going to uh, create the uh, list of guest speakers for the coming months. And if anybody has any input in that, uh, I'd love to hear from you. And um, so we say thank you once again to Danielle. That was terrific. Go ahead and um, yeah, I'm gonna say take your take your take Lead your off mute off and and thank, you. thank you, Danielle. I'm Let her so know what you thought. That we asked thank and you, you. Said yes. So grateful to have you, you here. What a wonderful yes. exhibition tonight. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Very it's much. a real it's a real honor, and I I wish I could stick around, but I have to fix dinner. <laughs> oh, okay. It was great great having you, and uh, again, we're grateful your your artwork was returned. And um, great, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Uh, now I want to go ahead and give the uh, floor over to Mark Dutton, who has a public comment. Yes. Is, is the video working now? Uh, I don't see you. No, I just, oh, there, there you are. There, there it is. You. Okay. I have my security window on. Yeah, <clears throat> Hi. My name is Mark Dutton and I am running for LACCD Board of Trustees. That's, that's Los Angeles Community Colleges Board of Trustees. There's five, there, there's seven seats actually. And I am running as a fiscal conservative. Um, politically, I'm a moderate and I always try to get people together. It's becoming harder and harder in this world. But um, I want that there's a lot of money that goes to the LACCD. I don't know if a lot of people are aware of it. It's probably one of those sections that you skip over when you're when you're looking at your ballot. But this board decides billions of your tax dollars. That's with the B. So they have been spending a lot of this money building facilities. There's been a, there was a, there were four facilities bonds. I don't know if you remember like 2016, I think they all went through. They're asking for 5.2 billion more. And we have something near a 70% graduation failure rate and dropping enrollment. My philosophy is let's put all that other stuff aside. Let's get kids in the seats. Let's get adults in the seats and let's get our graduation rates up first basic education that allows people to get to move into a high paying career or move on to a four four year college. Then we worry about all the other stuff and shining up our buildings and doing whatever they want to do, adding your, your uh, Wi-Fi and 5G and flying cars. OK, so my name's Mark Dutton. My Facebook page is Mark Dutton for LACCD 2020. Um, you can go there, check out. I put a bunch of material up there, a bunch of data up there that you might want to look at. Um, it's so important. Community college is is important to people that can't afford four-year college. So thank you, Mark, thank very you. much. I have to limit public comments okay. to a certain thank, amount thank, of time. I very much appreciate you. your comment there. Once thank again, you. you said you were running as a fiscal conservative. Did I yes. do that? Very good. Yes. All righty. Uh, while the uh, agenda item number three is open, are there any other um, public comments before I move on? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank and uh, let's go. I wanted to now turn over the floor, agenda item number five. I'll give it to KT Travers, and she'll talk to us about Indigenous Peoples Day. After I unmute my audio, exactly when a big truck making lots of grinding sounds with its transmission is going by. Um, sorry about that. Uh, let me pull up a poster here. I don't know if you can 
Oh see my it. good. Yeah, I, we can see it. Yeah, unless you ha unless you have a graphic, I can uh, let you share your screen. But that is wonderful. Did Liliana uh, put the artwork together? Yes, Liliana did the artwork. And if uh, some of you go by the um, uh, the entrance to the 210 freeway going west, um, there is a big green um, banner there on the fence, um, just as you uh, are about to turn right into the on-ramp. Um, and uh, that's for us as well. Our second annual Indigenous Peoples Day um, is Sunday, October 9th from 12 to three. Um, we're uh, we've decided after the success of our first Indigenous Peoples Day to make it an annual event. And so this is the second of what will hopefully go on forever and ever. Um, we have a lot of information about the various um, uh, people that you can see at the event and um, on our website. And our website is ST forward, and that's ST for Sunland Tahunga, stforward.org, because we're a not for profit. That's what that .org means. So stforward.org, and um, you can uh, find out something about us as an organization, and at the same time, look at what um, uh, we're presenting for the second annual Indigenous Peoples Day. There's a list of the presenters and the culture bearers who will be um, there. And uh, and um, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions about? Yes. Yeah, people? I do. I wanted to find out. Um, was there any response from um, neighborhood council when they were approached? Um, neighborhood Council um, uh, was asked to disqualify us. Was asked to disqualify you? Yes. What does that mean? Um, well, what happened was that at the uh, budget and finance meeting, um, I had gone there just to listen to what was going on, but there wasn't anybody from ST Forward there. And so Ed asked if I could answer some questions. And I said, sure, but um, just answering questions. Well, there was somebody else at the meeting who knew that it was, which I didn't know, nobody there at the meeting except for this one person knew that it's inappropriate for somebody who is on the neighborhood council who is also representing a not-for-profit. If you participate in any way at any meeting, whether it's a budget and finance meeting or the general meeting, um, just even answering a question gets you disqualified. Oh, um, you oh, you were asked to recuse yourself from discussion or voting because it was an event. I knew that I was supposed to recuse myself from voting but um, I did not know that I was supposed to recuse myself from answering a question when asked by the chair of a committee if I could answer a question. Hmm, oh, okay. So, um, so NC, the NC was not um, able to assist you guys um, that way. Right. I am volunteering. That was not their, that was not their choice. That was a request that came in from the, uh, uh, city attorney's office from the city attorney's office. Oh, I see. So somebody alerted the city attorney yes. and then they I had, had to make a, uh, an assertion. Yes. Okay. From city attorney. Okay. And, uh, while though I missed, um, the general, uh, volunteer meeting, Mm -hmm. um, I did get back to you, so I, I can look forward to hearing uh, back from you before the event regarding uh, the duties that you need me to fulfill for you. Yes. Oh, okay, because I do have a couple of questions and in, in what you'd like me to do and what information you would like me to relay to the stage manager, for instance, if I'm helping, you know, those arriving, stuff like that. Okay. Absolutely. And we'll have uh, parking maps and um, maps of the setup and all of that that will be going out as we get closer to the event. Okay, great. And um, Gerardo showed up on uh, Sunday for one of our work days. 
to help us out. Thank you, Gerardo. Yeah. You're welcome, you're welcome. Welcome. And, the um, yeah, the, uh, the beautification committee after their cleanup that day came up to MRSA to help us clean up MRSA in preparation for um, uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. So it was really wonderful. Mm, okay. You can see all of the beautification people there. Thank you. Very cute. Okay, see, we do some good. This this yeah. networking. Well, that's what to me the the committee's most valuable aspect is the networking. At least this gets us all talking pretty regularly with uh, regard to everything else. So that's wonderful. Okay. Um, oh, um, that, I'll save that for another yeah. point in the conversation. Um, Later. Later then. Okay. Um, any anything else then on this um, agenda item? Um, nothing else on this agenda no. item, unless somebody else has a question about Indigenous Peoples Day. No, we know the date. It's October 9th. Um, oh, I can't remember the artist. There's a an actual um, kind of famous recording artist who's going to be there. Um, uh, a uh, um, uh, an indigenous hip hop artist is mm. going to be one of the presenters. So, oh, okay. So, if family friendly hip hop, I wanted to say if anybody were like knowledgeable of like the hip hop community, we might know this person. Yes, he's, he's somewhat known. Oh, okay, yeah, the band name, but I, <laughs> I made it a point to try to remember it, and of course, it went completely out of my head. There you go, because I sort of, uh, yeah, I fell off the train with Joan Baez, so <laughs> far back as I go. Anyway, very good. All right, thank you. Indigenous Peoples Day, looking forward to that. Um, agenda item number six now, then, is uh, update for the McGrory Arts Center. I'll turn it over to Joanna Gates. Yes, and thank you, Jennifer, for um for uh telling everybody about the burgers and beer we do have an official date which is um decided to be the october 15th and it will be at eight o'clock or no i'm sorry six o'clock till about 8 30 or 9 or so and um just to let anybody know i've been kind of doing some diligence but we are still in need of a beer vendor <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so if anybody knows anyone or, or has any connections, our, our um, former connection has kind of fallen through over the last couple of years that we have uh -huh. not been in contact. Um, so I'm, I'm looking to recruit, um, recruit somebody um, as far as like a, a microbrew or, or something like that, that could actually um, service us for the event. Um, so if you have any suggestions or let, or let anything, let me know. Um, yeah. May, uh, may I suggest uh, you, yeah. can get, you can get in touch with the, uh, uh, gosh, Teodoro Payne Foundation, and they have connections. It? Teodoro Payne. Theodore, 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 Theodore Payne. Payne. Okay. Correct. And they have microbrewers that they uh, volunteer and they offer beer service. Oh, cool. Flavors. Okay. So. Okay. They got the connections is, right there, and they are local. Okay, is it pain spelled p like pain like a window pane or pain like p a y n e? <laughs> Thank you. I was just gonna guess on three different ways of of spelling it. <laughs> Thank you, Gerardo. Yeah, I Joanna, will check in on them. Can you tell me? Did you guys pull the permit, the one day alcohol permit yet? I believe we have everything else done, um, other than um, we're. We're still uh, finalizing who's going to be cooking the burgers and the beer source is is uh, still up in the air. So I believe that we have the the um, the uh, the permit in place. Okay. As far as I know, as far as I know, but that might be something I need to check with um, on that. Yeah, because it it sometimes sometimes it's fast going, sometimes it takes weeks to get the permit. It's a one day okay. beer permit. Don, yeah, you and, uh, Mission College. We used to go through the culinary department at Mission College. Yes, and they they've kind of fallen off to the wayside. Uh, so that's where we we went to them in the past, and I guess they're either not available or they. We haven't been able to connect with them again, somewhat 
somewhat similar to the beer um, connection. You know, either we've lost connections and we don't have anybody returning our calls or we just haven't gotten a yes answer from anyone. So, but we did reach out to them as we did in the past. Um, but so we're still working on it, um, but we have our um, our band in place and everything else. And um, who's the band? At this point, the, the um, let me tell you the name. It's called the. Russo. Oh wait, what was it? La Rue sounds. Yes, thank you. Because ironically, I have the old flyer in my hand, not the new flyer. La Rue sounds. That's spell it, right? that. Spell spell L-A-R-U-E the. L a r u e sounds. Mm-hmm. Sounds. Yeah, they played yeah. at uh, um, the, the pit and the, uh, and at uh, I think at the crow's nest also and stuff. Okay. Right, the crow's nest. That's what it was. Yeah. Terrific. And uh, mid. Uh, meanwhile, also our classes just started yesterday. Um, and as as Jennifer mentioned, she is she's teaching this session as well as I'm I'm teaching. Uh, we had, I mean, unfortunately, I think we just got our date announced, you know, is when we could finally get reopened and have our classes started by the time we got marketing, we, we didn't do, we didn't do too well. Some of the classes just didn't run at all, but, um, but we're hoping to, you know, we're trying with, with trying to do some smaller workshops in between sessions or still, still marketing to people in between to let them know that we, you want to, we're going to try to do some, either some smaller pop-up events or smaller workshops that are, you know, not, they don't run the whole duration of the class session, but at least keep people interested. And I'm, I will share it with you, Joe, too, that um, I'm going to put together a survey to kind of canvas everybody's interests you know as far as ages and interests in class and things like that that we'd like to know what people are looking for when they're available you know what age groups they have in their families and just try to get people um talking to us so that we know what you know what they want to you know what they want to see or again what time frames are, are are available these days or whether their kids are at home school or whether they're at, at homework so you know people are available at all different days and times these days. So it's, it's hard to know when, when to put classes uh, either in the morning or the midday or the afternoon. So we're kind of trying to formulate um, a survey that we could put out to just kind of ask everybody and get everybody back on board. So then hopefully the burgers and beer event too, will bring people back and, and get people back in the, in the swing of things. So our first time out, but we're going to still keep working on it. And I think the only other thing I was going to ask you, Joe, was there any other information on the chairs? Did we get any information as far as um, the request for the chairs? Oh, no. I don't know. Um, Maybe I can talk to some of the members of the NC separately to see if they would, now that you're open again, if they would entertain that. Because I was kind of thinking that I just might do it as a private citizen, you know, set up a GoFundMe and try to find other uh, resources to, uh, you know, pull money to, you know, $3,000. I can buy you a set of, I can buy you guys a set of chairs. Now, the last thing you sent me was even better than a folding chair. They might be interested in stacking chairs. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yes. And in the, in the long run, I mean, of course, because in the long run, the, the folding chairs have always been problematic for the children that often fall through them. <laughs> unfortunately, um, pinch their fingers, they're heavy, they're bulky, and they're really old. So the fact is that, you know, we have some office chairs now that are very similar to like the, the type of metal frame, comfortable seat that we could stack and actually will end up taking up less room because well, they'll stack upwards and we could still stack them on the old racks that we have for the, the old metal chairs. But also if, if they look nice enough too, we can have similar chairs that we could use for events and classes and they will look nicer as well as just also bring us into the next era of, of kind of wanting to present ourselves as, you know, um, you know, in other words, we want to Thank present you. ourselves well to the new clients, to our new clientele. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's a so bringing in, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we want to put a good, good showing. 
So well, the chair you can, that, you can, that Joe had found was padded and we had gone to Kylie about it and she had selected it, it had a, a black. The one that I sent him. Yeah, I think I, I've actually been doing the chairs myself. So, okay. um, so I, that's I don't, kind of, I don't I think just, I've shared, I haven't shared that recent picture with the committee. Okay. But it's that a, it's, one. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like basically like an event or like a meeting room, like chair, something you'd go to like a hotel um, yeah, like and a sit on something like that. Exactly. But in other words, that way, it's also it's also reasonable in the sense that, you know, we wouldn't want, you know, the first day of classes, they're covered in paint and we can't clean them, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what i mean so we want something obviously reasonable but you know if it it's comfortable but it also looks nice and it's durable and in the long run it'll just be something that lasts and that's really the, the more important thing is that seen, that it'll last us over time i'm sorry i've seen the uh, how the chairs stuck at the um uh, what is the lounge on the elk lounge they mm -hmm. have the stacking chairs and I've seen the chairs that we fold and unfold at uh, uh, Bolton Hall. Yep. Yeah. It is really hard. The Bolton Hall is, is makes me sweat. The other ones, <laughs> uh, yeah. no kidding. Uh, and, and the orcs lake and just stack them on top of each other. And, and exactly, the exactly. Cards. And they're so they're even lighter weight because they're not a hundred pounds of metal. <laughs> the, <laughs> exactly, it, and that's true. exactly it. Over the long term, that's what we're hoping to to do. So, yes. And it, you know what, Joe, too, is if we if we don't get word from anybody, you know, wanting to help us, maybe we could do a special fundraiser or something like that. And, and you know, do something where another not like, a you know, similar to our burgers and beer. But in the past, you know, with some of the schools, um, the local schools and things like that, we were talking about like a spaghetti dinner, like fundraiser or something like that. So it's possible that, you know, maybe we could get an event going at McGordy that is a, is a potential fundraiser and that serves even what, what we tried to do before was kind of like an open house to demonstrate si different types of classes and things like that. So, you know, we can potentially put something else in the works um, that works in, in everybody's favor. And that also just gets people back on track and knowing that we're there and knowing what we offer and hopefully get some new people, you know, coming on site. Okay, very good. Thanks so much, Joanna. Uh, before you. you go, um, yeah. I'm yes, sorry. Katie. I, um, no worries. I'd wanted to uh, let you know that there are a couple of uh, microbrewers near here oh, that you okay. might want to approach directly. Okay. Um, about whether or not they'd be able to take care of your event. Um, one of them is uh, Brewyard Beer Company in Glendale. Brewyard. And then beer there's um, Lincoln okay. in Burbank. Lincoln? Lincoln in Burbank. Okay. Okay. And, um, and then there's one in North Hollywood. Um, Hop Masters, I think is oh, the name of it. Yeah. I actually I recently contacted them. Oh, okay. But but good to know. But thank you. Good to know because I've been trying to not only just contact random people, but ones that actually have good good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's thank one you, thing. Katie, for that. And and actually, you just need somebody to man the beer station because you can buy wholesale beer from i forget where they are in van nuys i've used them for the festivals but you know they'll sell you you know kegers of uh, different types of beer at about 33 cents uh, for a, a 16 ounce cup and you can sell it for whatever you want and we've yeah and we've considered that like whether we were just going to buy beer in bulk and serve it um the the problem was i guess you know finding someone that could run a tap versus or if we just get bottles and cans and make it simple you know, but then of course, you know, it's keeping it cold. What do we have? Do people want what we have? What type of variety? So, you know, we're, we're, we're really going through all of that right now. If we don't find someone soon, we'll have to, we'll have to revert to that. Um, but we do have that option. And we were thinking about that as well. But thank you for that. Because maybe that's a difference is go to like a wholesaler type of person and they might actually, that's a different, I didn't think on that level yet. So yeah, because they're really but close. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And, and right, I, will I know my husband was helping volunteer with, uh, they were selling wine before because there were a lot of women attending that didn't want beer, they wanted wine. So that is yeah. something to think about. 
Okay, and I actually was wondering about that myself. So yeah. I agree. So they had some. <laughs> yes, right. BYOB. BYOB. Yeah, yeah. I know that's about the BYOB. <laughs> Eric, Eric Thanks, Halstead, and my husband David Jenkins had uh, were manning it for the mm -hmm. for majority, and they were paying for it, and they were handing them the little wine bottles, or well, you just get a Costco box of <laughs> the box of red, box of white. <laughs> Thank you guys for all that. I'll I'll get I'll get on it. I'll get on it. Take care, guys. All right. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh thank you. So up under uh discussion, I wanted to ask, and maybe it's a rhetorical question. Um, how do you guys like the uh guest speaker series so far? Pretty good. I mean it's a, it's a nice oh, picture. Yes. It gives us something. Yeah, I think it's great to help us promote the meetings as well i'm perfectly fine with you know people showing up for the guest speaker and then we go on about our business as uh, whatever's necessary uh, but if you want to put together a calendar right now stark is scheduled to meet once a month right now we're still you know on the fourth tuesday of the month but if we put a, a calendar together for the guest speakers, we need somebody for October, November, and so on and so forth. Um, they can be artists. Um, we can utilize the pool of talent that we have among the, the members. Uh, like I would say, Kathleen, if, if you are interested in, in doing a presentation of some of your work, uh, Kathleen is a remarkable writer and uh that is in keeping with you know what we're doing here apart from um the other oh, artists thank other, you that's very kind of you um no no i uh, appreciate it. i just want to say like you know they all our, our our guest speakers don't always have to be you know canvas and paint type artists you know we have some sculptures sculptors a big clay, uh, yes. i i asked uh it, gerardo of course has a wonderful I'm getting ready. I'm, and Marsh already ready. has a house full of really finished pieces and Thank she you could take us on a virtual tour. It, mm -hmm. I think she might be willing. <laughs> yes. Marsh, yeah. Um, well, she was attending tonight. She, she, I saw her earlier. She's no longer here. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, Gerardo, you you just give us a month advance notice. You know, when you're ready, you let us know. Um, and so we also I'm have ready. a big poet. You know, we have a poet laureate right in our committee. Yeah, we, don't we? Uh, Ameri don't we know former, former uh, emeritus uh, laureate for Selma Dahunga. It's right. It, did we? That's our committee. I think. I and think. Then, I, I think. I read my limerick last month, didn't I? There once was a girl yeah. from Dahunga <laughs> who had a huge pair she had of some fungus. <laughs> Kazungas. <laughs> Kazunga. Well, yeah. You know, I, Jennifer also. I did. We lose Jennifer already. Jennifer yeah, she just was. She, she was interested. Her. She was interested and she's a watercolor artist. So um, she, she was interested too. And I told her that we would ha try to get a list and let her know what other dates were available. Well, tell you what. Um, Shelly, if you send is, me the list, we could put it up in Google Drive and we could start filling it in. I could send us all a link to it and we could just start asking. Uh, okay, yeah, well, yeah right, right now. Um, right now. Do we agree this is a good idea? See, I. I was hoping they would stay for the whole meeting and they'd be wanting to get involved, but it just doesn't seem as though that happened, huh? Hmm. No, that's okay. I mean, people have lives and stuff. Um, do. I don't want to, you know, try to conduct more business beforehand. Yeah. I mean, it was enough that they had to sit through our minutes and all that. Right. I think we're okay. Um, I, I made my pitch. I said, you know, we have other business and you're all, you know, as guests, it's a public meeting and you're welcome. We, I went through all that, but you know, this is fine. They would have um, to come up with a good pitch for how they as artists could be become part of this committee and promote art and sell it to Hunga. Um, um, may I say something? Sure. We, uh, we are thinking about artists, but also uh, seniority counts. We have uh, Marlene Heat, I mean, Marley talking about Dick. experience and poet, yes, and a, a person involved in the community, very with very roots. The roots are deep in in, in Santa Tahanga. 
I think well, Marlene well, Joe has a be, yeah long list of poet laureates. Marlene Marlene Hitty would be great a great candidate for a, this uh, topic. Um, yeah, she could she could come and do a reading. That would actually be a good idea. There is a, a release party coming up. It's called uh, Crystal Fire. Uh, my work is included. Poet laureate Alice Perot, Marlene Hitt. It's an anthology of more uplifting poetry, and that's coming up on uh, October 16th. I'll send you all a flyer. It's at uh, a gallery in Monrovia, and they're hosting this release party for us. Uh, but Don, once again, uh, you said you would be willing to put a monthly calendar together, just say for the next well, week. Yeah, so if it's always the fourth Tuesday, if you want me to, I'm going to list all the fourth Tuesdays. Yeah. People, we could just start, uh, you have to ask the person and they have to agree to it, but see who's available and if you want oh, sure, to yeah. so that it's not always in one painter after another, like you say. Yeah, it'll just be tentative for now. Please, uh, if people know musicians or somebody who wants to share that type of music, certainly a filmmaker would be wonderful if they wanted yes. to come and share a video of theirs uh, for that yes. time. So um, Joanna expressed to me that uh, some people at McGrory, uh, what she just mentioned, Jennifer and other people might as well um, be interested in being put on that list. What I'd like to do is um, uh, think about it, unless somebody knows uh, who's available to uh, be our speaker in October, we can take a few days, but it always helps if we know that person like three weeks in advance, then we can at least uh, promote. Um, it was really good that um, uh, Danielle was able to get the word out. I saw Don put the flyer on yes. the Facebook page and uh, I moved it over to my Facebook page, so I don't know if any of my friends saw it, but um, that's what we that's what we have to do. I'd like to figure out if there's some place more prominent that we can get it listed on the NC website. I put it on the community pages for Selena to Hunga. Oh, good. Same as though that that really pulled a lot in, but I did put them on the inclusive community page and the. The Solon Tahunga community, like the community news page that Robin Jody is a moderator on. And also, mm -hmm. just getting, but if Chapoa. every single person on this committee would take, like I created a flyer, I sent it out to all of you. If you put it on your Facebook page and invited everyone you know, I put it in my news feed. So then we, as a group, have much more ability to send the message out to the universe than just little old Don here. Yes. Also, uh, Don, uh, I think it would be a good idea if you can contact uh, Monica Rodriguez so we can use her website for this. <clears throat> can can we use her website for it? Do they? Is there space for community postings like that? I bet they. I mean. We can okay. We can, yes, they can include ask. in their newsletter. They include okay. public events. We can ask. We can we just can ask. If they say no, they say no. So Correct. would we go through Eve Sinclair? Eve no. Eve is no longer with us. Oh, the, the I mean, new Eve, guy? Mary McAdam. No. Yeah, uh, the the new the new Eve is named Mary. Okay, Mary. So would I go through Mary? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I do get newsletters from Monica, so I must have the contact information in those, right? Well, yeah, I think that, yeah, it's more interesting for people who are local, but if uh, I could, I can tell you that uh, both Paul and Debbie were visiting us from a suburb of Seattle. So, wow. Oh, wow. At least they're in the same time zone. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. So if, you guys, do you think it's worth my going through the effort of making the flyer? Did it help at all? Yes, yes. Okay, we, because it is an effort, and we, we have somebody, we the, need to have a, a picture of them, an image, and something about them, a little blurb, to put it together fast, because it's hard to promote something. Now, Danielle has tons of stuff, so she was very fast. Yes. But not everybody else would be, like Marlene. If Marlene has a picture, if you have a Oh, well, see, Marlene would have photos of her books, yeah. Yeah, her, yeah, her book covers. Right. And then yes. she, has a, she has a promotional photo that's fairly current. 
um, we can keep the format exactly the same, you know, okay. uh, that way there's a, Makes it easier. and those of you, those of you who open the emails that I send you, does it look more interesting when, cause I've, I've attached it does. the flyers right? look beautiful. The, yeah, well, the, really the emails, at least when you open it up and I say, <laughs> here's our agenda. And then you yeah. see the, the flyer as part of, of part well, of the email. A picture right? speaks more louder than the word. So, okay. Well, if, if our goal, you know, it feels like this committee has been going through a, a challenge. And so if we want to build the energy in this committee and have more people join and participate and be more enthusiastic. Uh, just let's all think together how we do that. How do we all, if there's a flyer generated, can we share it on Facebook somewhere where to get somebody's attention that's interested in promoting, promoting the arts? Like when Eric Santa Esteban first joined this committee, he had so much enthusiasm and now he's gone. I'm so sorry he's gone. I hope he's still promoting the indigenous people like he was last year. Oh, he's very involved. Yeah. So, yes. People come, people go, but I'm just saying it'd be nice to to attract more people, build the energy and get more things, uh, more art, more, and celebrate arts. You know, like we had that open studio tour before COVID, we had several of those and it's, it really feel, felt like we were acknowledging all the artists in this community. And is that one of the things we have in our, our mission statement? I think it will be great to continue that open studio. Well, then Sunland, then uh, Start Committee can actually get in there and be one of the sponsors if we do it four or five months in advance so that then we can uh, draw some funding from the NC. Um, the one thing I've noticed is we, as a committee, some of us are more active than others. And um, it's very difficult to keep the minutia of the meeting running and then run around and be active as well. So it would be fine if we uh, picked like one annual event that we all were interested in and, and a, 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 an, art, an art tour would be very characteristic of the group. And we, can, we could get a, a good chunk of funding, not only from Start Committee, but we could get it from Cultural Affairs as well and uh, do the kind of promotion, but it's- Well, uh, Marsh, we, can, give us some, Marsh yeah. can give us some help in that direction. Well, I'll it would be- I'll just say right now, it's a little tricky because he, mm -hmm. as you know, the, the Gordy, uh, Joanna, you want to speak? Uh, do you mind me asking Joe about, I saw all the restrictions you're putting out for holding classes there right now. Yeah. A lot of artists aren't really opening their studios yet. Um. Are you asking me, Don, or you're asking yeah, Joe? Yeah, asking you about what are we are. <laughs> what, what are the restrictions at McGrory? Well, I, I actually, it, it actually came up as we were talking. I was actually going to say something. So thank you, Don, because it was right on point. Um, we, per the Department of Cultural Affairs, and as you see, if you've seen one of our announcement, it's it specifically even says, this is per the Department of Cultural Affairs regulation. Um, for instance, even the burgers and beer um, event, we had to request, and we did it to, we did request to Monica Rodriguez because she said she was going to help us with chairs and tables for the event that we asked her for additional funding for a porta potty because we are not allowed to let people inside the, the building unless they've been fully vaccinated and, or they have a recent, um, uh, test of, that means that they've been vaccine. clear. Yeah, exactly. And that goes for anybody also taking classes. Some of the classes, specifically the ceramics that are in the basement and close quarters, the wheels, the potter's wheels have been moved outside for classes. Um, and some of the classes that are be being able to be conducted outside are conducted outside. But at this point, it's mainly ceramics. But what makes it really kind of a pain in the butt is the exact point that we said well we're gonna have to get a bathroom outside whether it's an event or a, or a class saying that we don't want to exclude you if you're not vaccinated or don't have a have a card 
But at the same time, we say we can't let you indoors specifically. <laughs> so you, so you have anything to have like, they, like a policeman at every door then. Exactly. For. It's exactly. And so we brought this up recently saying, well, if we're going to have events, we're going to have the, you know, again, we have to have them stop them at the door and say, you know, or, or again, check their thing, give them a bracelet or something, right? <laughs> like, oh, we've checked you. You're okay, you know, to come in. And policing people. And it's really, it's really, you know, unfortunate, you know, that at this point we still have to, you know, do that. But of course, you know, it's for the safety and the public well-being for everybody. But it's a hard thing to say, okay, well, we're at an event. You can go inside, but you can't. <laughs> you can go over there. You have to use the outside porta potty. You know, I mean, it's just it's it's getting um more complicated and obviously gonna cost us more money. Um, and like I said, is whether we have a class outside for these, for, for people, you know, we also have to have a bathroom outside and a sink right. outside and, you know, and you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's and, still, and it's, it's also masking, yeah. masking, and, right? Well, and they do want people even outside to wear a mask. Yeah. In addition to the distancing and all of that still. Which is really hard to believe because there's so many places that even you go to LA, Los Angeles, and we're, we're going to art shows and everybody's walking elbow to elbow. Nobody has masks. It's all indoors. They're serving food. They are serving drinks. And none of this is being done at, at, at a lot of these exactly. local venues. So I, I'm not sure. Shopping. Yeah. And so I'm not sure. Shopping. You don't. Need exactly. So now. I'm not sure why we're being micromanaged like to this degree still. Um, but that's why we're specifically putting up that this is not uh, our requirements, it's their requirements. And, you know, we're not necessarily happy about it. We're happy that we're reopening, but that's, that's about it. And so we're going through these minimum or these, these basic requirements, hopefully until they tell us they're lifted, but we have no idea when that will be. Okay. They're not giving us any idea. Whatsoever. All righty, gang. I'm going to have to move things along. Uh, thank you, though. That's uh, Gatoli, Gatoli terrible wants news. To say something. Yeah. Gatoli, Gatoli. Oh, I, I just wanted to say that um, all of the major cultural venues, you go to a museum, you go to the LA Phil, you go to the opera, you have to show your vaccination card. So it isn't just cultural affairs. Nothing. 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 Yeah. I'm trying to remember the last time. Uh, I mean, it was more than a, it was about a year ago. I went to the Pantages. That's when I had to show a vaccine card. Um, let's see. Huntington, Huntington Library. I had to show a vaccine card yes. as late as May. I don't know if they're still there's still a vaccine. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. There you have it. Yeah. So major cultural venues mm -hmm. um i guess uh people letting people into their studios that doesn't count as a major venue but oh dodger stadium i did not have to show vaccine okay that's outside oh. are you talking out, out of doors so yeah okay like at the hollywood bowl um you didn't have to it's out of doors you're required to wear a mask until unless you're eating and then you put your mask back on. But okay. they didn't require that. Maybe by a year from now, you know, we've typically had tried to have the home studio tours in a time when it's not so ultra hot. So maybe mm -hmm. by next fall or spring or something, that it'll, if it looks like the mandates are loosening, then our local artists might feel less in jeopardy if they were to invite people in their home studio. Yeah. Okay. Or we could just. Um, only make the studio tours for the safety of the artists available to people who show their vaccination cards. Yeah, that would be a, a wearing mask. There's options. There's yes. options. Okay. All righty, guys. Um, let's go under community projects. Uh, apart from what you said, Gerardo, is uh, there any update on the, the mural project? Yes, we are waiting for the insurance to be active, which will be uh, October the 1st. We were asked not to do anything without the insurance. Oh, so, so they had to re uh, renew that. They had to renew correct. the insurance. Correct. And that'll be October 1st? 
Correct. All right. And it looks like the weather is helping right now because uh, the heat, the very heat uh, wave, it was with no insurance. So we didn't have to be there. All right. Okay. Very good. And then Michelle sent me uh, another proposal. This is from Industrial Metal Supply. That right. is that is only for the supplies. That is right. not for the fabrication. Right. Okay. So to me, yeah, that's not crazy expensive. Mm -mm. So we just need somebody. I mean, I could weld it. It'll look like I welded it. That's <laughs> unless we have somebody. I have been in contact with somebody and I had Gerardo talk to him because he was asking questions I couldn't answer because I don't know anything about welding. And so, I talked to you know? Walter, that's his name? Yes. I talked to him today and uh, he has questions about it, how we're going to be attaching this to the wall. And I told him it's going to be a permanent attach. We're gonna, not going to be opening or moving it around. It's going to be attached to the wall. Okay, that has to come from the people who's actually going to be doing that. Correct. Right. So the frame, he's going to build the frame. And I told him it needs to be uh, encapsulated on the C channel. So whatever he's going to do, we're going to have to move the, the uh, mosaic to his place so he can put the last, the last part of the whatever is going to, we're going to slide it in and he's going to weld it right there permanently. So, okay. Yeah, he can do that. So yeah, the, uh, either the top and the bottom channel can correct. be bolted. The artwork can be slid into place and then correct. the last bit can be welded on. And then the only way that gets moved is with a grinder. <laughs> correct. Well, that's what he's, he's going to do it. Okay. I don't know. I don't know uh, anything else about it. That sounds uh, great. Right. I, I wrote to him and I was like, did you did you get an estimate? And he no. and I wrote to Walter and he has not given me the exact monetary. Uh, uh, we have every right to say no if it's too high. Uh, is this somebody that has to, where's this money coming from? If we get all the- Well, we, maybe it we was going to it, come from the school, but I know that Miss, it has to be cheap enough yeah. for them to afford it. Okay. So. And if it comes from the school, does this guy, in order to get paid, and even for industrial metal to get paid, does it, uh, are the, do they have to be set up as vendors for LA Unified? That is a very good question. I will find out. In other words, you know, yeah, because yeah. the school's got to be able to pay them. So Right. Uh, I think it's from a discretionary fund so i may not have to be a vendor but i could be wrong oh okay i know that miss Wynn is raising money on the side so it may not come from lausc but it from the school do you know what i mean like okay. as a fundraiser. but i know she also wants to put some painted murals up so it all is coming from the same place. So that's why I was like, I, when I told her how much that one man wanted, she was like, we can't afford that. And I said, I know, I'm trying to get it down. <laughs> Sorry, what's the uh, fabricator's name again? Uh, Walter Tyler. Walter Tyler, okay. And right now he's been approached, we're waiting for his number, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, there was another gentleman I approached, but he wanted to come see the, he wouldn't just give me an estimate. And I felt like I, maybe I, sh if it's up to you, it um, felt like that was asking a bit much. You know what? I'd like to, you know, if there's one person that we actually really want to work with, I can understand them finally wanting to see it because just working off the dimensions and, you know, him welding something together. But um, yeah, that's, that's what yeah, I it, thought. I, I just think wanted him to give me an estimate. You've you've got. Do you have pictures of this uh, piece? Yes, I yeah, have. Them. If you have pictures, if you have dimensions, then yeah, whittle it down. Finally, when there's one guy that we want to work with, I'm very happy to make my uh, house available. Okay. Yeah, that's All what right. I figured. Thanks. 
I know. So I was already x naying that guy who. Uh, right. All right. And I was wondering if Joanna got a hold of the welder that she knows. Is she still Who's here? That? She's here. Joanna, you're you're muted. You are muted, Joanna. You're muted. Oh, still muted. Sorry, I hit the button and everything. Um, anyway, no, Michelle, I was waiting to hear if you heard of any better people. I, I was kind of checking out the guy over here that's around the corner from me. He's kind of like, he's really good at what he does, but I checked his reviews online and they weren't that great just because like, you know, he's just kind of a guy in his, his workshop. So I wanted to see if you had made any other headway. He's definitely somebody I could talk to just because I, I do talk to him when I walk around the corner and talk to the guy. But as far as being a professional, I, I got the gist that he's not very professional. <laughs> so I didn't want to recommend him. Nah. Okay. okay. You, you yeah. know what? Uh, Gerardo, remember Marsh had a metal worker make all those sculpture stands for her? Correct. That metal work, could that guy be competent? I don't know. I'm what I would have to ask Marsh. Yeah, you might ask her because he, he gave her a pretty good price on them and they're really well made. Right. Well, I'm going to ask him tomorrow and I will get back to uh, uh, Michelle. Okay. With the info. Right. That on? Okay. Yeah. Terrific, then. Uh, unless somebody has uh, an update on the bus bench ads, um, I can table it. We've done a lot of stuff. I think we can table it. Oh, hey, I just one. put up so the, Oh, she has it ready. <laughs> so you asked me to enlarge the image I did, and I made the shadows clear to go to match the guy on the donkey with the, the donkey, the lighting. And then I enlarged the Stark and I tried, I looked everywhere for my notes, couldn't find them. So I can't remember what else you were asking me to do on this. Hmm. No, I mean, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't give you any other advice. It looks very fun. It looks good natured to me. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... You know, a, a panorama, I know at one point you asked for that, but it takes, taking a panorama shot but really the message is get off your ass and join us so that's the what's going to get the most eye can't the have, is, yes. see the, the laughing donkey and well and the double entendre because like he's also you know you're kind of he's he's butt first and anyway <laughs> so yes that's kind of kind of a double a double whammy <laughs> yeah he's headed the wrong direction I've... or he's not he's not he's not yeah it's properly. great i think it's funny <laughs> it's, i think it's great it's th it's thought provoking. It's funny. It's creative. It's all of those things, and I, yes. I think it's great, Don. But thank you, you. thank you, Joanna. I know Debbie said she liked it last week. Debbie's on mute. But um, if you guys, if you don't like it, I'm anyway. This is just a. It's, it dress. gets the attention. That's for sure. I think. That's Mount Lucan's right behind his ears there, right? Yeah, and whether whether or not you like it, I think it'll like it'll it, it'll garner a second look at yep. it. Like, yes. what the hell? Is, I mean, if anything, most people say, "What the hell is this stuff?" You know, which is good. At least mm -hmm. we. Uh, and you know, I, I tried some cartoon symbols instead of the word "ass," but it just looked weird. Yeah. You know, because there's only three letters. It just. Well, it's not four word. Uh, Soft word. word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody else have any comment? I like it. I like it too. Yeah, I like it. I it's especially like the coloring that it really grabs your attention. That marigold and and uh, sunset. Yep. Yeah, I try to use those flag colors. You know, yellow, red, and orange. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the that's yeah. the poppy colors. Those are the big. Those are the in publicity, those are the, the flag colors that grab your eye. So okay. well, we've got we've got Sunland Tahunga for hikers and for bikers. Mm -hmm. If that's gonna play, it all has to do with the images that we find for both the hikers and the bikers. 
Um, I think we'd have to take pictures. I looked on Pixabay. There was nothing that yeah. really was going to do it. So we, I have a back, I actually have a backpacking picture from when I was backpacking in a backpacking class. But, you know, if, if somebody wants to put on a backpack and pose, you know, in our, one of our nature places we hike, that would be way, one way to go. Yeah, I think the idea is to have like this really burly looking guy all well, bent like, out in leather and like his knuckles are all tattooed. <laughs> and, and he's, he's uh, smelling a bouquet or he's, you know, he's, he's into the forest or something okay. like that. Uh, that kind of goes off of what Joanne was saying and being a hiker and a hiker. So you could have yeah. a Harley, but he parks it up on, and he's. On 7-Eleven. Yeah. 7-Eleven. Uh, or he's, or some really sexy guy um, sitting on his Harley with a. Uh, with, with a, a backpack, with a backpack on her back. A backpack and some lederhosen, you know, a backpack and some shorts <laughs> or something. Or some sort of a hiking well, outfit were, from the waist down. They were filming um Sons of Anarchy up here, right? That guy's pretty right. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Use that guy. <laughs> uh, he lives in England. <laughs> oh well, yeah, no, it would be Oh, Someone wait. who looks like that idea. Uh, okay, so all of those, all the boy, how do we get, boy, is there any way we could get a cheap They'll license? Go down to the crow's nest when they're really drunk and say, hey, I got a photo release. Would one of you guys let me photograph you? <laughs> yeah. All right, somebody, we're going to do that. Or you could show um, a biker and a, um, a hiker with yeah. their arms linked. Yeah. Could be a girl that's a hiker with her backpack and the boy with the bike, you know. He... Okay, lots of different things, lots of different eyes, ideas. Bikers and her hikers. Yeah, they don't need to all be guys in these images, right? No, I mean, you can have girl bikers. Girl yes. hikers. Boy hikers. Seven, eight. Um, we need. Photo. So anyway, there were a lot of hiking pictures, but a lot of them, when they showed the backpack, they only showed the person from behind. You didn't get their face. Even those are copyright free and they're free images. So I'd have to keep looking. There are a lot to look at. So I could keep, you know how it is, well, I, keep trying different you search know, engines. Recently, well, recently we've had some motorcycle issues ourselves, but I was just thinking though, if if I could also, I'm thinking that if, if McGrory, because you know, we have the back hill, yeah, I have tons of backpacking supplies and and um, a frame like a like a framed uh, backpack. Yeah, and if Michael just puts on his bike, his uh, motorcycle stuff. Yeah, and we could do the whole hikers and bikers combo, but then actually use the backdrop of McGordy, for example. So I wouldn't have to ride the bike up into the Angeles mm -hmm. Forest where we where we would potentially have to try to figure out a photo shoot area off the side of the road, etc but make it like a safer place that we could actually manipulate the shot and use the background at McGroarty like we're hiking up the hill kind of thing. Well, do, do you know but, there's, there's even, McGroarty owns the property going up the hill to the cross. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. If you dirt road to the cross, you can do that with a motorcycle, can't you? Uh, uh, I wouldn't. It's very no. pitted. It hasn't been resurfaced in okay. years. We can ask well, I'd have to go. I'd have to go check it out soon. I'll I'll just take a hike up there soon and I'll lay it out. <laughs> we can we can all we can always ask Tina Ike. She's the in charge of uh, the Pond Family Open Space. Yeah, the, and, yeah. Uh, 210, 210 yeah. and and Sunland, and Sunland Boulevard. That's true. We could ask permission to for us to use that as a background and also. We are but I like majority. Is it McGordy? Uh, we are blessed we can catch a beer yeah. or two right there. Well, yeah. The only reason I was saying McGordy because I know we have full rights to use it and I'm already, you know, we're already I'm there fine. and I can get in and out and no problem. And yeah. Actually, um, the cross rather, I wouldn't have to ask anybody's permission. <clears throat> the cross is on a park called Pasco Park, which is a public park. Okay. Anybody mm -hmm. can go up there. Okay. And use it. Cool. Well, anyway, so there's lots of uh, things, Joanna, if you were kind enough to want to do that, because you're, you're, your husband's a photographer, and you've got the gear, and you've got the, if you've got the enthusiasm to do it, hey, 
That'd be fantastic. Well, yeah, at least now that we're I, we're uh, open again, things are cleaned up, and I know we got the the, the trees trimmed and the the pavement. No, <laughs> ironically, yes, they did the parking lot, but I found out they refused to do the driveway. It was kind of weird. Uh, they did when the they driveway a couple years ago, so they may feel like they they did that. They I know Monica yeah. got the driveway done. What was it about four years? Was ago? it? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, because they because the tree roots grew up again. And that was the yeah. one spot they said, okay, to repave was where the tree roots were, but then they wouldn't do the rest. So it's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> so you do the problem. But uh, I'll work on that. I'll uh, work on that. Okay. Yeah. And then we just we need one more slogan. Don't beat us, join us. Eh, it's not really working for me anymore. <clears throat> Data. One that can uh, let's play. There could be something uh, about service. Just to be inclusiveness. Because, you know, the, the, the queen died after 70 years of service, and look at the acknowledgement. And so, what mm -hmm. people do on the, like you, Kathleen, everybody on the board is making a service contribution. Everybody here on the committee is making a service contribution. Like, make a difference, make a contribution that me, a meaningful contribution in our community. Yeah, it has to it be. Might inclusive. be a fun way of saying that. Anyway, well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut. It has you to off. be inclusive. Inclusive. It has to. What What is not inclusive about service? Well, we have to do it in different languages: Korean, Spanish, English, and Armenian. So it is inclusive. Oh, not only in English. Let's see. Well, if you had a theme we, like service, you could show people from every. You know. <clears throat> can we do it in Klingon? <laughs> then that way, no oh. one can say we were leaving them. I don't know. I don't speak. Out? I don't understand Klingon. Well, do you understand <laughs> Korean? No. Okay, but I so English. So. I know. I'm just saying, if you showed people of every. Uh, ethnic group in the photo of oh, wait, wait, I think maybe he's got something here. What if we had a background of things in multi languages like um, we'll pick a phrase and then we'll have it in 12 different languages yeah. and then we'll say like pick your pick your voice, pick your language and, and do it, you know, pick your language and join us. Or something like that, or. But if they're going to serve on the board, don't they have to speak English, Kathleen yes. and Michelle? Don't they have yes. to speak English to be on the board? Yes, to be on the board. And our committees, we only speak in English. Yeah, right. we conduct our, our business here in English. And when right. you um, uh, register to run, it says that um, uh, all uh, board business is conducted in English. And yes. couldn't you get a translator? You get a translator for the public, not if you're, because it costs a great deal to have a translator. Yes. Um, it, yeah, it's, uh, they wouldn't provide a translator because somebody wanted to be on the board. That is not inclusive. Um, it, it's too expensive. I think it's like $300 a pop for a translator. And it is the official language of the of the United States at this point. Correct. So it doesn't mean you can't have your native language, of course. My mother spoke many languages, but she learned English as soon as she came here because she wanted to speak the language of the land. Right. Yeah. So I'm just saying, but we could still make it inclusive somehow. Like I say, if you have uh, every kind of person in Salon de Hunga saying, we come together to serve. You know something about and and people could have t-shirts representing their group what if we uh, it's something like the water's fine come on in we have a the water's warm we have a huge hot tub with 10 different races of people all sitting in a hot tub together you know the water's fine come on in <laughs> stnc come join the stnc hot tub they're going to ask you for a, a, a vaccine card. <laughs> like it's a small world. Yep. You know, after all, right? The the um, yeah. hands across America. 
kind of like that. Well, there's there's all those bumper stickers like coexist, you know. So there's there must be some fun ways we could do that to make it inclusive. Well, what if it was a what if it was a bowl of soup and all the vegetables have like little faces on it and they're all different colors and different vegetables and they're come on in come on in the, the temperature is fine. <laughs> I don't know. In other words, like it doesn't have chicken to soup for the time say, like, all. Well, in other words, we take all kinds, right? You know, we take it takes all kinds to make make it the, takes make all kinds work. of vegetable to make a stew. Exactly to make it good. Yeah. You know, in other words, it takes it takes all kinds to contribute. We need your contribution to make something good out of this. Basically, you know. Yes. Takes it so. Yeah, I was like thinking like the little onion guy, the little carrot guy, the, you know what I mean? You know, just floating around in the in the hot tub kind of stewish thing, and um, getting cooked. you know, because then it would be kind of fun and creative, you know. And we didn't have to use people's faces or things like that, and and try to figure out, you know, make it make it personal, but just make it fun and saying it's symbolic of representing different people in different shapes and colors and sizes. Well. Joanna, diversity technically diversity the, to make yeah. a great tasting stew it takes all kinds exactly stnc <laughs> join us well you be careful with that because uh some of the hunger forward already uh tried some approach with all the and the mural that um uh, it was rejected by the son of the hunger network council that uh Evelyn serrano proposed with all these oh. animals and oh biking. no the stnc didn't have a, approval rights and the mural is still going up oh okay it's just still in the city process oh okay okay yeah well so be careful with those how we interpret that graphic yeah there were just some people in the community who didn't like it that it it um that the mural is representative of the whole community and even has somebody in a wheelchair and somebody on a right. horse and a skateboarder yes. yeah. and everybody yeah right. that sounds great it is it's a fabulous it old people on with their canes in the um uh, crossing the street it's a it's a fabulous mural i'm will be fabulous when everybody finally gets to see it <laughs> well hopefully we'll show up hmm okay so i've sort of envisioning like this big stew pot that shows like 10 different vegetables in a mm -hmm. stew pot. Another yeah. idea would be um, a choir where everybody's singing on the same, we're singing in harmony with each other and you have every kind of elk in a choir. Let's get on the same page, STNC. We are the world. We are the world. We are the yeah, the, that's what I was going for earlier with the, we, yeah. with the little children. Um, right, the like world. Small, holding small world, yeah. And it's uh, we are the world, and there have yeah, been these great that. videos, right, where they show people yep. singing the same song all over the world. They right. just do it on. Okay, you think people are going to be lured? All right, so lured to that kind of image? I don't know. I would what would so. get people to join? What people? I mean, mm. what are the things that would really? So maybe we need to meditate on this, all of us. I I don't yes. know. I'm 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 imagining um, Joe's image of the stew pot, and I'm seeing all of these different raw vegetables, whole vegetables sticking up out of the stew pot. Exactly with little yeah. faces. Yeah, with like little faces sticking out, different colors, it, different just, shapes, it different takes sizes. Takes all kinds. Exactly to make us. a good brew. To make us a yeah, we need we need your help. We need your contribution. We need you. We need you to join us. Yeah. I think that's a the great the message, right? And I would say the top of this too, an alphabet. So it's a super alpha alphabet with all, all, oh, all alf the letters, alphabet stew. All the all the community together. Yeah. Creating a, a stew with veggies popping up and fruit. Yeah. On the side. Yeah, like potatoes, carrots, uh, correct. You know, onions, yeah. all that. Yeah, and everybody else is going to want to have that pomegranate. Very Nothing nutritious. Wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Well, this might actually be a piece of art, right? Because if we end up, if somebody can draw a chunk of broccoli, a shallot, 
uh, carrot. I'm already working on it. All those vegetables <laughs> are already on Pixabay. That's not hard at all to get veggies. Vegetable with faces that can be like put yeah. together on a cutting board or put in put them in a stew pot with. We just need some and like a big spoon and a big like cauldron and a big spoon sticking out so that it's you know yeah yeah some, exactly the, the arm of a chef with a ladle in it. Let's mm -hmm. see. I don't think that they have to have faces. I think if they just had little eyes. Little yeah, eyes little maybe. eyes popping out. Okay, yeah. that would be or, good. Or they could. Some of them could have, depending on you know, you could see their expressions like ah, oh, oh, ah, or who knows. Just depending on just making it fun. One of the says yummy. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes all kinds to mushrooms, mushrooms. It, yeah, I'm it takes all it. kinds to make a great tasting stew and a well. And that's why we need you. <laughs> neighborhood council. So yep. we need you. Exactly. We'll make it rhyme a little. SDN. Like like we're, stone we soup. Getting, we are yeah. getting there. Yeah. We are getting there. Let's keep on going. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, actually, I kind of like that. That yeah, could be that could be lighthearted and humorous. Yeah, I, I think just it takes all kinds. Come join us. I, I think mm -hmm. that that's all you have to say is it, it takes, takes all up. kinds. Come join us. Mm, how about I like it takes all kinds to make it work. Oh, well, that's, that's it, exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. It takes all kinds to make it work with a vegetable stew pot. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Don, do you want me, do you want to have fun with this or do you want me to draw something up? Well, if we're going to do Photoshop, I can grab the veggies. I've, I've done vegetable art before where I can make the nose come forward and put eyes in it. And oh, really? Oh. oh, yeah. So I've done it with lemons and other things. Yeah, OK, so you're good with Photoshop? I really no, I was just going to draw it from scratch. Yeah. So if you if you do Photoshop, it's easier and faster for you. Go for it. Um, if you you can always let me know and I can always create some of them if you can't find them or something like that. Let me know. Well, if you want to do like, like a drawing of what you're seeing as a design, the, um, then I could find the veggies and stuff and put it in, put it in the eyes. And, okay. Oh, we'll 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 collect. We'll collect. We'll collect. Collaborate. All right. Dawn. Yes. I would like to Mushroom. include you and the guest speaker too. Don't forget. Put your name on it. Potato. You are a great, very onion. great person, Amor. Thank you. Yeah. I haven't been doing art lately, except this kind of art where I'm promoting something mm. for somebody. And yeah. you're good at it. Well, broccoli, broccoli, potato, broccoli. Oh, anyway, carrot, I'll think I heard carrot, 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 onion, mushroom, celery. potatoes, potatoes, celery. Oh, celery. That's a good one. Celery. celery. Cucumbers. And I have like a little, I have a little pearl onion, like a little pointed head already with his little eyes sticking out. <laughs> you don't normally put cucumbers in a stew. I know, but I, squash though. You could put yeah, squash. 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 Yeah. Squash. Squash. Yeah. Squash. 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 Yeah. So like basically mm. different colored little peas. squashy things. Yeah. A bell peas. Pepper. Yeah. Eggplant. Oh, pepper. Pepper. Oh, eggplant. Yeah, there we go. Eggplant. <laughs> eggplant. Who did it become a symbol of something else, guys? Oh, who knows? <laughs> I didn't see who did we, who did we just oh I think we just lost Mark Dutton but God bless him for staying as long as he did oh I think he just had the, it up he was off anyway so yeah, I don't okay, mind I'll, I'll do start. I'll do you a little doodle Don and I'll send you okay. over and then we, okay. can, we can collab on that and, and somebody we'll, said we'll mushrooms I heard mushrooms yeah I got a mushroom already I did a okay. little drawing of a mushroom okay um <laughs> you can have fun yeah <laughs> and then peas i got peas um okay yeah i'll keep going i'll keep going um oh while i just thought about it um jack pullman does anybody know him well he's about definitely hair. been uh, at mcgordy for ceramic shows yeah and shows and he's connected yeah his name I is know, familiar uh angela um knowlton actually has a connection with him but go ahead Hmm. No, I'm just curious because um, if he's going to be approached, like I said, we 
You know, we've got about four or five days before. Oh, you say we, Bill uh, Pullman's son, Jack. Jack, yeah. Okay. We were thinking of asking, inviting him to yeah, talk be a about guest speaker. So if we need somebody for October. Yeah, he's in that place across. I might be able to find his contact because we, I did go through his house when he was first to moving in. Yeah. That big building there on the corner of Commerce. Uh, from Bolton Hall. I know it's getting late. It's nine thirty-six. Are we ready to turn into pumpkins? Yeah. I was gonna I, say, is it bedtime? Is it bedtime, everyone? Yeah. No, I'm glad. No, I, I stay up till midnight, but I I got a husband in the living room. We we had a a, a husband in, in the bay. What is that Montego Bay out there? What are you, what am I looking at? This is actually a Starbucks background from Costa Rica. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those are nice promises. I could tell it was a personal photo, but I, you know, I just always envisioned you there, you know, it's like your, your own private jet, you know, aboard your cruise ship or something. It makes me feel like I'm on a resort. <laughs> it's what the, this is what the Starbucks looks like there where they have a plantation. Yeah. Cool. Got lots okay. of other, I just wanted to sync up with i thought about taking a picture of danielle's but i thought i be, better ask her first before i do something like that oh a, a picture of her you know a painting of hers behind me I went, oh oh I, yeah <laughs> I, I like i think we, i think we still have some of her work up at margordi too okay um very good then well hey we got we had good discussion on the bus bench ads um, so soon we'll be able to present those to the council. Um, discussion on future events. Anybody want to say anything about that? Oh, wow. Well. No. no. There's the one I already mentioned. No, okay. I haven't seen a flyer out on the Burger Beer and Ban. Is it out? A flyer? Yeah, well, ironically, we did our little... Uh, oh, you guys can't see it. I keep disappearing, I guess. Yeah, I'm like doing this magic act. Um, we did our little mailer, but ironically, mm -hmm. we did not do a lot of them, our traditional mailers, because we were going through email and also um, the, on or basically through Facebook and Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, I believe that um, I did send it to Joe about the burgers and beer, which was our original email, but it's, it's a kind of, it's not a flyer. It's mainly like it had, it was like a whole information sheet. So yeah. I don't know if you got it. The information um, sheet. I probably got it in there. So. Yeah. so if you want, you know, for instance, I didn't see any promotion of majority on those community pages and someone to hunga community page. Robin Jody is a very big supporter of majority. She would used to be on the board. So I'm just saying that if they got a fly, it doesn't, I don't, when I say flyer, I don't mean it has to be paper. I'm talking about. Yeah, like no, meaning, meaning that, meaning that we didn't really, we, they actually did, Ainsley did a really nice job and she just created this whole like, like landing page okay. type of thing. So it was really, really nice um, how she did it. And this was a part of it, like a little, you know, blurb. But um, I know, but if you want to promote this event to all the people who are not yeah. thinking McGordy just for art classes, and exactly. You want to it, we we've had huge fundraisers raisers for this event with people from all over the community. But we had a you know Karen Moore was the one who did the original flyers, but uh -huh. they were really you know they were paper. But we had them electronically. I was just spreading them everywhere. So yeah. we, put them in event, um, right? we put them on the Facebook pages for all the community pages. I'm just saying that if you really want a big turnout, we need to, you need to, you know, it's October is coming right around the corner. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And that was the, that was, I think what kind of bit us in the butt with the whole classes and not yes. having time enough to promote them, to get people um, to know about them, also sign up for them or be interested in them with enough time to also sign up and be ready for the session too. So it was just kind of a, it was um, too short notice, I think, for some people. But um, who was the person you were saying, Don? Or is there contact as far as I know? I know maybe I should bring it up to do an event break. Um, so I will bring that up. Too. You talk about uh, Karen Moore and the flyer. Yeah. What was you saying, Karen Moore? Karen Moore moved to Texas, but she was the oh. development chair for McGordy for years. It's yeah. I guess. And uh, I guess the Foothill 
someone, what is it? Someone printing was doing it for mm -hmm. her. I'm not saying well, you have we to have, her at all. We have Ruth, just, saying create Ruth. A, just a little blurb like we did for Danielle that we can post all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ruth is doing the Ruth um, read that's on our board. She's doing our printing now. Um, nice. But but yeah i wonder if we've done an event right um because our meeting's next week so i will bring that up to them too and see how they're promoting the actual event the other um, thing itself. is next door next door is you know like a, a great place to advertise things because lots of community members go in there daily commenting on every kind of story There's next just, door oh, did you say yeah it? we used to put it in the you know our new local papers but yeah I don't know how many people are getting the Crescent Valley Weekly. It's still ongoing. Anymore. But the other yeah. local papers have been kind of uh, not doing much. Yeah, exactly. They don't do much at all. Um, and they cost money. Yeah. It doesn't cost money to do Facebook as much as if if everybody in their mother posted on their page and put posts it publicly, it'll get out there. Yeah, I think we just we we kind of lost a lot of connections over the over the time we were closed. And unfortunately, not enough was done to keep the connections going, you know, rather than Nothing trying to almost like start it over again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to start it over again, again. It's like so it's like literally we're starting from scratch again. But, you know, hopefully that we're getting uh, word out to the people that, you know, will keep it going. But, well, all you have to do in Salon Tahanga is announce that you have food and you have beer and you're going to get mm -hmm. a, and rock music and you're going to get a ton of people. Let's face it. Yeah, we just had you know put up really loud music and beer and and food and, mm -hmm. and just people will come out of the woodwork up there. I mean, yes. we just were shocked at how many people showed up. Right. Right. From the first event we had. So if we had banners up on Foothill um you know at the park the park lets us park commerce and tonga canyon boulevard yeah. I, that's my route so i always yes. see the banner yes. and we got permission we didn't do it without permission but we got those banners up and joe aguirre and i were putting up banners for every event and um cindy was <clears throat> for us let me see let me see i can find um let me. Sorry, I can I'm see if I can to find the. For you guys, because I like to see you back up and thriving. Yeah. Um, and it's us. See, it's not just you know you. When I say you, no, it's us. It's our only yes, community yes. art center. Yes. This is us. Yes. So how do we promote uh, you know our our center to the community? Because once they come up there for the burger, beer, and band, that I used to always get into it with Laurel. <clears> said, Laurel, we need to have. <laughs> the winter um, class schedule that we can hand out to everyone at this mm -hmm. event because there are people I'd meet people at the Burger Beer and Band yep. that had never been to McGordy before. Didn't know exactly. And you need to give them something to, yeah, to walk away with. Big. I don't care. Even just a place that has a few featured classes and a website they can go on the internet now. Just something to get them thinking, coming back here, taking classes. Yeah, um, thank you. No, I'm, um, I'm like I said, I'll bring all of this up too. I think that was, it's kind of been like the transition into hey, like social here. media world yeah. for them. Yeah. That's been, that's been what we've been doing differently, but also just remembering we have to still do other things that are, and well, at least since I we have a new. I was always promoting on social media, Joanna, yeah. just so you know, I was always promoting on every place I could on and uh, Leanne Stein and, you know, when I was heading the community relations for the majority, I had a little committee and then <clears throat> and we were promoting it everywhere we could think of. Just so, just everywhere on the internet. Uh, Karen even came up with an idea of promoting the, the um, Chili Bowl uh, through an event site, a website mm -hmm. it's a, a event promotes events all over the country and she put in a blurb there so we were always thinking outside the box where can we promote this to everyone so it's, yeah, it's going I'm gonna to take a to little find... effort but it's going to have it can happen if enough people are willing to share and not just sit yeah back and spectate right and make it joanna gates do everything you're too busy to do everything. <laughs> have john do everything <laughs> let's see i, I did it for years so no i 
Um, let me see. I have. And I, I have. Help. I mean, <clears throat> uh, uh, Karen Moore, uh, Moore was doing a lot of promotion. Let's see. And then, of course, of course, I have the flyer, but only a copy before we had any dates or any information on it. Um, I have a copy of the digital flyer. Okay. Um, but it again, it doesn't have the date for the band or anything else, but I guess we could use it and then add that all on here and then launch it out. Okay, that'll be something I can work on. Yeah, okay. Ainsley's good at this. I know. I, I worked yeah. with Ainsley when we first, she first started on, she was already in ceramics, but then she came up at the office and was starting to work on the website and work on the constant contacts. And she's really yeah. good at that. So she, yeah, she started out as my TA in one of my classes. Yeah. Like a hundred years ago. Who knows? I know. But and she, she, she picks up this stuff about the yeah, contact she's really good. and how to use it and, and you make artistic fun promotion so if you get her on this i'm sure she could do a really fun one yeah i'll ask i'll i will bring it yeah, up she can add the add the date it's very important to have the 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 live music free live yes. music yes yeah. yes there you go and free they, live they, music. and 15 dollars that's not bad at all for beer i mean for not the beer the beer is not included i know it's just for the burgers burger, right? burger and, and it used beer. to be butter burger watermelon and you know trimmings yeah we were thinking dollars. about doing pumpkin pie this this year since of the date is closer since it's october we were thinking about doing the pumpkin pie versus is a dessert pie that's pie. nice so for 50 dollars <laughs> yeah. that's not bad at all as a fundraiser that's mm. like this is a they, stupid question but i love stupid questions um <laughs> are you having non-meat burgers as well yes oh good okay well i mean i think you are right because we always did they always they had like vegetarian patties. Yeah, I had. I yeah, had, they didn't. They I didn't have the vegetarian patties. Stuff that I remember, but I don't know. They always had a veggie patty. No, we that, were we were laughing because of course um, I was speaking with Kylie about all that and ordering what we were getting, and I just said, "Oh, so I just won't be able to eat anything," you know, um, <laughs> with, with all of my food allergies. But we were we were basically going with like a potato salad, um, probably like baked beans, something like that, and then pumpkin pie with the with the burgers and probably of course having the alternative between the uh veggie patty and a regular burger i okay. i assume i assume if we've done that in the past but again i need to bring that up because if yeah, Kylie's organizing it, it because, now uh, and she's not, yeah. that, yeah, really she's not good. aware of that yeah it was really good they had really good veggie burgers okay, okay thank I you guys i wanted okay. to allow you an opportunity to talk i really appreciate that um the meeting was meaningful with regard to at least getting some things hashed out. Uh, our next meeting is October 25. So shortly after, uh, we can talk about burger, beer, and band. Please email me with your agenda ideas and requests. And uh, remember, we need somebody for a guest speaker still. All right, all. Okay. Have a great okay. night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye.